We're at lesson 18b and we're going to be adding and subtracting integers. If you don't know what integers are, you can click the description and see 18a. So we can add and subtract integers. They're positive and negative whole numbers and zero. It's important that we know what absolute value is. It's a number's distance from zero. And you'll see it with these bars on each side. The absolute value of negative three is three because it's three hops away from zero. See? The absolute value of four, a positive four, would be four because it's four hops away from zero. Okay? So when we're adding like signs, we take the sign of the add-ends. If we're adding two positive numbers, we just add them together and the answer is going to be positive. If we're adding two negatives, they have like signs, so we add the six and the eight together and we give it the same sign as the add-ends. They're both negative, so the answer is going to be negative. When we have unlike signs, we find the difference of their absolute values. So what's the difference between a six and an eight? It's a two. And we take the sign of the add-in that's farthest from zero. This negative eight is farther from zero than six, so our answer is going to be a negative. When we have a negative six plus eight, we find the difference between the absolute values. The difference between a six and an eight is a two, and we take the sign of the one that's farthest from zero, that's an eight, and it's positive, so the answer is going to be positive. When we're subtracting negatives, we add the opposite. If we have eight minus a negative six, we turn it into an eight plus a six. We add, so that becomes a plus, and the opposite of a negative six is a positive six, so we have eight plus six, that's a 14. If we have a negative eight minus a negative six, then we add the opposite. So now we have a negative eight plus a positive six. See, this first one is gonna stay the same, okay? The minuend is gonna stay the same. It's the subtrahend and the operation sign that's gonna change. It's the second number and the operation sign that's gonna change. So if we add the opposite, we're gonna be adding a positive six. And we follow the same rule as the unlike signs. We find the difference. It's a 2, and we take the sign of the one farthest from 0. See? So let's do that some more. I want to make sure you understand that we're going to use parentheses. If we have a negative 8 minus a negative 6, this is too confusing on the eyes. So it's a lot easier to put this into parentheses so that we can see it. See? If we have a plus and a minus next to each other, that's going to be really confusing. So we put that into parentheses. We could actually put them both into parentheses and that would be okay. When we look at a number line, we can see what's going on. Here's zero. When we get into the negatives, we're going smaller. And the farther we go to the right, we get larger in the positive numbers. When we add like signs, we have a negative plus a negative, so the answer is going to be negative. See? If we have a positive plus a positive, the answer is going to be positive. These are like signs. They're both negatives, so the answer is negative. These are both positives, so the answer is positive. We just take the sign of the add-ends because they're like. When we're adding unlike signs, we have a positive 2 plus a negative 5. We find the difference between the 2 and the 5. That's a 3. We take the sign of the number that's the farthest from 0. This negative 5 is farther from 0. So the answer is going to be negative. Negative 5 is 5 hops from 0. The 2 is only 2 hops from 0. See? We have a negative 8 plus 6. That's going to be a negative 2 because we're going to find the difference between an 8 and a 6. That's a 2. And take the sign of the one that's farthest from 0. And negative 8 is farther from 0. So the answer is going to be negative. When we have a positive 8 plus a negative 6, we find the difference between the 2. This is a positive, that's a negative, so they're unlike. The difference between an 8 and a 6 is a 2. We take the sign of the one that's farthest from 0. This positive 8 is farther from 0, so the answer is positive. See? Just find the difference and take the sign of the one that's farthest from 0. When we subtract negatives, we have to change the subtraction sign to addition and then change the sign of the second integer that would be the subtrahend. We change that to its opposite. Now, you can look at zero, if we have our number line going up and down, you can look at zero as like a water line. And when you 
go negative, you're diving, and when you're going positive, you're jumping up out of the water, you can look at this as feet. So if we have a negative one, that means we're like one foot below the water, and we're going to take away a four-foot dive. Well, if we're taking away a dive, that means we're jumping up, right? We're taking away a dive. We're going the opposite direction. So we add the opposite. We have a negative one plus a positive four. See? We just follow the rules of adding unlike add-ins, and we find the difference. The difference between a one and a four is a three, and we take the sign of the larger one from zero. So that would be the positive four. So the answer would be a positive three. See? So you start by adding the opposite and then following the rules of adding unlike signs. So here's some more. We have a nine minus a negative four. We have to add the opposite. So that means we're going to add a plus four. Now we just have nine plus four. That's a 13. We follow the rules of adding like signs. They're all positive, so the answer is positive. When we have a negative nine minus a four, we keep the negative nine, we change this to a plus sign, and we make this four the opposite into a negative four. Now we're adding like signs. See? We're adding a negative nine and a negative four, so we're going to have a negative 13. Like signs, like the add-ins. In this one, we have a negative nine minus a negative four. That's going to turn into a plus sign, and the opposite of a negative four is a positive four. We just add unlike signs and follow that rule. So we find the difference between a nine and a four. That's a five. This negative nine is farther away from zero, so we're going to take its sign. So our answer is negative five. I'm going to show you how to do subtracting negatives on a calculator at the end of this video. Okay, so stick with me. So here's the rules again. When you're adding like signs, the sum is the same as the add-ins. So if you're adding two positives, the answer is positive. If you're adding two negatives, the answers are negative. When you're adding unlike signs, you find the absolute value difference and take the sign of the add-in that's farthest from zero. When you're subtracting negatives, you add the opposite and then use the rules for adding integers. You add the opposite and then you use one of these two rules, whichever one fits. And remember that zero is an integer too. All right? So I got a couple more examples for you. When there are several integers, Remember, if we're adding positives and negatives, and there's several of them, the commutative property says that we can add them in any order and get the same answer. 2 plus 3 is 5, and 3 plus 2 is 5. It doesn't matter which comes first, the 2 or the 3. When we add them together, they're both 5. So we can do that with the negatives and positives. We can add the two positives together and get a 15, and then add the negatives together, because this is all plus. See, we're adding and adding and adding. So we could do it in any order. When we add the negative 5 and the negative 4, they have like signs, so we just add them and take their sign. That's a negative 9. Now we can do the positive 15 and the negative 9 and follow the rules of adding unlike add-ins. We find the difference between a 15 and a 9. It's a 6, and the one that's farthest from 0 is the 15, and it's positive, so the answer is going to be positive. See? Here's like signs. We're going to add and add. So it's a negative and a negative and a negative. We just add them up and use the sign of the add-ins. We get a negative 14. When we're subtracting several negatives, we add the opposite. So instead of subtracting a negative 8, we're going to add a positive 8. And instead of subtracting a negative 4, we're going to add a 4. Well, 8 plus 4 is 12. Now we have negative 5 plus 12. So remember, this minuend stays the same. It's the subtrahen and the subsequent numbers behind it that are going to be changed to addition and the opposite, okay? We follow the rule for unlike signs. We have a negative and a positive. We find the difference between them. That's a 7. And we take the sign of the one that's farthest from 0. 12 is a positive, so the answer is going to be positive, all right? Now, when we have word problems, we need to be able to recognize the equation, so it says, Bob had $60, he spent $25 on an old bicycle, he spent $32 on paint and parts, and he sold the bicycle for $95. So he fixed it all up. He bought it real, very inexpensively, bought some paint and parts, fixed it all up, and sold it for more than what he bought it for. See? Now how much money does he have? We could say, 
we have $60 and we're going to take away 25 and we're going to take away 32 and we're going to add 95. But it can also be written as $60 plus a negative 25 plus a negative 32 plus 95. So you need to be able to recognize that you can either subtract that amount, which technically, yes, this would be easier. But if you see in the book, it says which equation fits this word problem on the test, you need to be able to recognize that you can add this negative and add that negative, and it would be the same equation, all right? When we add this 60 plus that 95, because it's all addition, so we can do it in any order, we get 155. We know that's dollars, right? We can add together the two negatives and get a negative 57, and now add these two unlike add-ins. We have a positive 155 plus a negative 57. We get a positive 98. See? So be aware that you're going to have to recognize equations. Okay? So now here's how we're going to do this with a calculator. On the calculator that they're going to loan you for the GED test, right here you're going to see this button that has a plus slash minus. All right? And that changes a number to a negative. So for subtracting negatives with a calculator, if we have a positive 9 and we need to subtract a negative 4, the answer is going to be 13 on the screen, but you would enter the 9, then the minus, and to get this to be a negative 4, because we just hit that minus, didn't we? You hit the plus slash minus button and then the 4, and that will change it to a negative 4 for you. Then you hit equals, and you'll see the 13. If we have negative 9 minus 4, you can't just enter negative 9. You can't hit a minus and then a 9. It won't work. In order to have a minus 9, a negative 9, you have to hit that plus slash minus button first, then the 9, and it'll put this into parentheses for you. Then you can hit subtract 4 and equals. You'll get a negative 13. If you have a negative 9 minus a negative 4, you're going to have to hit this button a couple times. You're going to have to hit the plus slash minus, then the 9, then the minus, then the plus slash 4, plus slash minus again, then the 4, and then equals, and you'll get a negative 5. So I want you to try this on a calculator that has this plus slash minus button and practice. So if you're doing these on the GED test and you've got that calculator, then you can just use the calculator. If it's too confusing for you and you'd rather stick with my rules that we're using here, if that's better for you, then do that. You don't have to do these on the calculator during the test. Answer the questions however it's going to make sense to you, okay? So now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 211 and Remember, we can use parentheses so the sign of the operation doesn't get confused with the sign of the integer, all right? So you don't want it to become confused, so we can put one or both of the add-ins or the minuend or subtrahend into parentheses, all right? We're going to talk about multiplying and dividing integers in the next video, 18C. And I'm going to have links to a Get Ready for Algebra number 8 video. And it tells you the difference between an algebraic equation and an algebraic expression. That's kind of a good video. And then I'll have links to these Grade 6, Grade 7, Algebra 1 videos that will help you with adding and subtracting integers. And the previous video, 18A, where we talked about what integers are. All right? So we're on our way. We are into algebra now, officially. And I hope you do well, and I hope you're okay, and I'll see you next video. Bye.